He can also be a moisture consultant. Okay, hello, I'm Christoph Irwin with Positive Energy. Welcome to our video blog. Uh, Positive Energy is a building science consulting company dedicated to bringing the human factor into high performance buildings through consulting, uh, enclosure design, mechanical system design, and of course high quality performance testing. We're here today at this house in central Austin that has dun, da, 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 an AirCrete installation job. I don't know if you guys have heard about AirCrete. It's an MGO, magnesium oxide cement product. And I have been wanting to see it go in forever. So finally happened. It went in uh, a few weeks ago when I was out today checking in moisture content. It is taking a long time to dry here in this uh, cold um, few months here in Texas. Um, so talking about MGO concrete insulation, brings up this topic of insulation uh, generally. I'll give you the quick flyover, right? What's this building we're in? It's an indoor environment. It's a separator from the outdoor environment. This wall, this window, they're forming an environmental separator. And that environmental separator is supposed to do four things. It's supposed to control water, rain and groundwater. It's supposed to control airflow. It's supposed to control vapor flow and it's supposed to control thermal flow. This AirCrete product is, is an insulation that's primarily oriented at thermal, the flow of thermal energy, and it's trapped air uh, in insulation. It, it is the trapping of air that causes insulation to work, generally. Um, let's see, I'm dying to show you this, but I'm gonna go one more sentence. And that is, when it comes to trapping air, we trap it in fluffy things like uh, denim, like fiberglass, like uh, cellulose, and we trap it in um, polyurethane foams, open and closed cell spray foam. No difference, well, not no difference, but not much difference chemically between a bowling ball and polyurethane spray foam, except one has a lot of air bubbles in it. Um, so there's also foam sheets, polyisocyanurate, and there's EPS and XPS. But today we're looking at this cavity fill product. This is a piece of AirCrete. I'm gonna bring it up closer to you. And uh, it goes in like a, um, kind of like shaving cream, but I tell you, it doesn't feel like that. It, it, it feels nothing like polyurethane spray foam. You can't feel it, but it weighs almost nothing. I mean, to say it's like a, a moon rock or something, I've never felt a moon rock, but it's basically like, um, like a talcum powder arranged in a, in, into a, kind of like a solid, but check it out. If I press on it here, you can see it doesn't take much. It's extremely friable. It can just go in and it just becomes like dust, right? So the wall cavities of this building, and there's some pieces that take a little more crunching to get out. The wall cavities of this building are filled with this material that is trapping air in its structure. And in so doing, it's insulating, right? So it's, it's been measured at R6 per inch. And we can go to the AirCrete website and look up those tests. And it's three and a half inches here, six and a half inches plus up in the rafters. It's, it's in there, it's got netting, it's got this strapping on it to keep it in until it dries. It fills these cavities. When you, if you reach your finger in the cavities and you pull something out, it comes out like a powder. It was really, um, I confess I was a little bit uh, surprised, a little bit concerned that it didn't have that kind of hardened shaving cream like spray foam does uh, quality to it. Here, if you feel it on these walls, it is solid. It is, it is very much like someone took a bag of Portland and just packed the wall cavity here. Can you see if I pat here? Packed these wall cavities. It feels a lot like you're just packing on cement. I mean, here's a little loose, but you can't feel it, but I'm hitting hard right there on something. Let me find a tight spot. Here, this one looks tight. Look at this right here. So, looks like he's gonna have to push it in to get the sheetrock to go. And I was just talking to uh, Keen Christopher at Aircrete, and he was saying that what they do is they run a heavy roller over these studs to make sure it's all gets pushed back. It's going to be able to be pushed back enough for when he sheetrocks. And what happens then is that they pulverize this extremely friable surface material, leading to this, uh, when you reach in, you get powder out. Okay, so a few more things about AirCrete to talk about. Um, we showed you that it's, it's like this little rock, but that extremely um, powdery 
and it dries out my skin when it gets on there. Like, you know, kind of like concrete powder wood. It's extremely light. I wish you could experience this. You can see it, it almost floats in the air when you throw it. So because it's extremely dry like that, uh, dries us out, dries our skin out, critters don't want to make a nest in this. It desiccates them too. Bugs, pests like that, it actually will kill them if their body gets exposed to this. So it's essentially critter proof. Termites aren't going to live in it. Um, it, it also is, is MGO, it's a concrete, it's not going to burn. Um, mold will not eat it. Uh, it's, it's R6 per inch, mold proof, uh, won't burn. Critters won't eat it. Pretty cool stuff. Um, this was this builder's and this client's and my first experience with it. Definitely an eyebrow raiser. Definitely uh, interesting material. Okay, so there's a few more things about this house overall that are worth mentioning and I want to touch on them. One is, we've been talking about aircrete, what the, the choice of aircrete was uh, made primarily because of the, the question marks that the client and the builder had about using uh, open cell spray foam on this project. And ones that I couldn't um, confidently say there's absolutely no, no problem with it. Um, spray foam is used everywhere. It's a fantastic product, mature, been around a long time. It's also true that it's not used in Europe and that in the European market they would have to prove that there's no damage to health because of it. And here our market is more the, the, the reciprocal of that. We have to prove that it does cause some damage. So no spray foam. We used, they used aircrete instead on this project. Um, and they also, another thing they did was right here, we're looking at what normally would be probably Advantech on here, um, some sort of OSB subfloor. Instead here they've used uh, V-notched uh, two by six tongue and groove as their subfloor. Again, they're, they're very concerned about indoor air quality and they were just thinking that they didn't want any um, chemicals in the house that they didn't have to have in the house. Okay, so another few things about this house, this, this aircrete house, this will probably wrap it up. Um, dehumidification. Here's a supplemental dehumidifier used during construction phase. They're, they're trying to promote drying. It's, it's cold out. It's not drying much without it. This house also is going to have a supplemental dehumidifier integrated into its mechanical system. And the mechanical system for the house is a Mitsubishi City Multi S Series VRF system. It's going to have one outdoor unit and it's going to have three indoor zones, three completely separate indoor zones. And if you, if you don't know what VRF is, there's other videos out there about it that we've done. So it's also going to have high quality filtration design and it's going to have um, air distribution that's been uh, measured and set up to make sure there's balanced uh, flows of heating and cooling around the house. So when it comes into air quality, we have good filtration, control of the humidity, um, good mechanical system design, not oversized. It's going to be part load, efficient at part load. And then the other big one is all around us. It's the enclosure. We already talked about the insulation, but outside of that, what we have is um, very good air control air on this house, which was actually the, the zip sheathing product. And then they did a couple of layers of 30 pound felt over that and then some hardy lap. So they were just really careful on this, this house. So we'll uh, let you know how the blower door test goes on.